Hi, uh, Michael Johnson, and I'm with uh, Grassroots Economic Organizing. And uh, in this interview, we're going to be talking with Christina Jennings, who is the executive director of Shared Capital Cooperative. And uh, Shared Ca uh, Capital Cooperative is an organization that connects cooperatives with capital. And uh, I'm not gonna go any further with uh, any description. I'll let Christina uh, uh, do that job and I'll just ask her some interesting questions. Hi, Christina, how are you today? I'm doing well. Hi, Michael, nice to, nice to talk with you. Okay. Um, so um, just give us a kind of a brief overview of what shared capital cooperative is and, uh, and, and what you all do. Sure, so shared capital is a cooperative um, of co-ops. Uh, so we're a cooperative owned by cooperatives. We've got about 250 cooperative members who invest 200, in- 200, excuse me, 250. 250. Yeah, 250 okay. cooperatives from very small to a little bit larger across <laughs> the country. Um, and they are um, in, they're, they're investing in shared capital, putting capital into our fund and also borrowing from um, shared capital. So we are a loan fund, uh, and I'll throw, out, I'll throw out terminology for those who care about it, but we are a community development financial institution or CDFI, um, and a loan fund that provides uh, financing just to co-ops. Um, and again, we are um, owned by the cooperatives who borrow and invest in us. So when you say co-ops, you are talking about housing, worker, uh, um, producing, and et cetera, food co-ops, yeah, so the, the whole nine yards. That's right. We are a cross-sector uh, we serve a cross sector of co-ops. So we have we work with housing co-ops. We work with small farmer producer co-ops. We work with um, worker co-ops, uh, and other consumer co-ops and purchasing co-ops. So yeah, across the across the gamut, any type of cooperative, as long as they are operating on a cooperative basis, can be a member and borrow from or invest in the fund. Okay, great. Uh, how did you end up in this biz uh, business industry? Yeah. Um, and uh, and at shared capital. Well, I, my I came out of um, student organizing and a variety of different types of economic and social justice organizing, um, and um, realized that access to capital was pretty powerful. That the, those who have it <laughs> um, can do a lot Very more. True. <laughs> those who don't started trying to find ways of moving capital into the the work the work. The various movement work I was committed to that started with fundraising and grant access. But what I realized was that um, that that had some limitations, and so started looking at different types of investing. Social Im impact investing was what it was called uh, now. What impact investing, um, and so I I ended up getting involved in first working with some loan funds that worked with small businesses and communities, trying to um, provide capital to folks who didn't typically get access to the capital, and then. Um, and discover really frankly discovered co-ops along the way in that work. That's when I really learned more about co-ops. When I was working with all different kinds of of small businesses, local businesses, um, and realized um, that co-ops. I, mean, I loved the model. Didn't know it, you know, all that well. Got to know it a little bit better as we, um, as I encountered more co-ops, I became more excited about that about the possibilities of. The collective work towards shared goals, um, rather than sort of hope throwing every all, every individual to the whim of the market and hoping they um, you know, that they fend for themselves. Yeah. What if we, you know, realizing that if we came together and really uh, worked on these issues, we could really make more of a difference. And so, was really excited to get involved with shared capital about 12 years ago. I came on board. We'd been facing some tough economic times as part of the Great Recession. Uh, and uh, came in to try and sort of work with the existing board and staff to um, to sort of find the find our path going forward out of that. And so I've been with the organization since then. Okay, so uh, has the pandemic affected uh, your organization and access to capital and et cetera, et cetera? If you could uh, just kind of tell us about that. 
Yeah, the, I mean, the, so the pandemic um, has affected our access to capital in, some, in a couple of ways. Um, one is that when, when, thing, when we started being aware, when, just as things were unfolding, I guess, uh, we uh, saw that a lot, of, a lot of people were really anxious about the economic situation. And so we immediately offered to all of our borrowers the opportunity to just defer payments for a period of time uh, while we all figured out how this was going to impact um, impact us. And so that um, was really important to do, but it also meant we had a lot less capital coming in. Okay. Usually we've got money coming in every month from our borrowers that we then can put out as new loans. In addition to going out and raising new dollars, we're, we're putting that money that's coming back in to work. So that had an immediate impact. It was really important to be able to do that. And I, I'm pleased we were able to do that, but it, it does reduce the funds we have available for new loans. And then in addition to that, um, we did see some funders, uh, we were in the middle of applying for one uh, investment. It would have been a, a large loan to us or a grant to us, depending on how it had played out. And that big large funder, uh, announced they were not going forward with their plans because they needed to shift their, wow. their focus. Wow. So um, that was disappointing. Fortunately, we've seen other, you know, we've seen some other really committed investors and funders who've said, oh, now more than ever, we need to make sure we get money out and we get it out efficiently and quickly so that folks can put it to work where it's needed. And so we've been turning to those funders and away from those who are shutting down the channels. Okay. So uh, I noticed on your website that you that you are in a position to provide emergency loans. Is is that still the case? Yeah, we are providing. So in addition to allowing our existing borrowers to put off payments for a period of time, so that um, you know that they can hold their cash and while they need it, we also are offering emergency loans to those who need additional cash, both our existing members and borrowers, okay. as well as other co-ops. So we have made. Um, a number of, of small emergency loans just to help folks cash flow through this time, have enough cash to pay the most critical things. We're also trying to work with those co-ops to help them figure out how to, how to make adjustments so that they can um, survive as well as access the SBA, various small business administration emergency funds. So yeah, but we have our own small pool of emergency funds um, maybe if I could just, I'll just say our board um, was really uh, responsive and they stepped up and said, let's, you know, we, they, uh, they decided to make, make it available more quickly than our usual process. We made a simplified okay. application. We made a simplified approval process so we could try to get dollars out quickly. Um, the maximum is $50,000, so it's not, it's not a lot of money. Um, and we realized that debt might not be the solution for everyone uh, during this time, but trying to get dollars in the hand. And then, have a pretty flexible repayment plan for those who borrow. Okay, and and uh, and if anyone out there that's watching <clears throat> that uh, is interested in exploring that possibility, they could just contact you through your website. That's right. They can email info at sharedcapital.coop or go to our website sharedcapital.coop uh, and and get more information. Okay. Um, so let's turn and, and, and talk a little bit about, uh, uh, from a movement perspective. Um, so loan funds are very critical parts of the cooperative movement. Uh, and so you're one part, one piece of that part. Uh, how, what do you know about how the the pandemic has impacted the whole field of uh, cooperative loan funding, if, or if there's a more appropriate term than that. Uh, yeah, that's, yeah, okay, that's great. Good. No, that's that's good terminology. Uh, yeah, the yeah, there are a small group of of loan funds that are serving primarily serving cooperatives. Um, we're part of a larger field of small business and housing loan funds um, that don't that don't necessarily work with co-ops. And um, so I think uh, we've been in, we've been actively in touch with other co-op loan funds and have um, I think what we're hearing is so similarly I think we we were sort of comparing notes last week and uh, so here's what I've heard is we're all experiencing about a third to um, thirty to forty percent maybe of our borrowers are um, unable to make payments right now. Um, 
and oh, that's, have, a, that's a big number yeah it's it's and yeah they're hopefully many of them are positioned so that once things start to reopen and can reopen safely they'll be able to right. um start working again but yeah so so that seems to be it was interesting how uniform that was across our experiences when we were comparing notes um and and then we're all trying to figure out how to make sure that um that the co-ops that we're working with can just survive this time. I mean, it really comes down to that for many of them. Can they just um, keep, yeah, they, the doors are closed, they may not be operating at all, or they're operating under really tough conditions because of um, the pandemic. And so uh, you know, I think we're trying to make sure that they can continue to take care of their workers, uh, okay, take care of their, their members, whatever type of co-op they are, and, um, and then just get through this so that they have the chance to reopen and um, be successful after this. So, one question that I that, that uh, I don't really don't know the answer to is preparation, but it, it, this question I didn't come up with until just now. Um, owners of worker cooperatives are not in a position to apply for unemployment benefits. So, if a worker co-op business has to close they can't tap into that source of uh, income. Is that correct? Well, it, so it depends somewhat on the structure of the worker co-op. So we have some worker co-ops where, the, where um, the workers are technically employees and therefore can apply for unemployment. Okay. And then there also are um, some, if you're, they're members of an LLC or, um, or owners, there are some provisions under some unemployment, some of the unemployment. I don't know all of the details. I won't okay, claim to okay, be an expert, right. but but I know that there are some opportunities for LLC members. Uh, the catch is if also if, if folks aren't um, legal residents of, uh, or don't have a green card to work, um, yeah, uh, they're they're undocumented. Then that can create some real hardships for those workers, and that's been yeah, an area that right. we've been uh, right. spending some time on. And then for other structures, it can be complicated. Um, uh, so uh, yeah, there's there are com there are complexities to it, and fr frankly, just figuring out what you can and can't apply for has been a challenge for folks. And then when they even if they figure it out and they apply, sometimes they're just not hearing back about these pro from the right. from uh, on the program. All of the bureaucracy. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm I'm a uh, uh, a member of an intentional community in uh, in New York City. And uh, we had to close two of our business, our two, our two primary businesses. Excuse me for a second. <clears throat> we had to close two of the businesses because they're not essential. Uh, but the community itself uh, is a business. You know, it operates like a business, and so the workers from the two retail businesses have been able to apply for unemployment. And uh, the community depends upon their dues to the, to the community as our operating uh, capital. And so that has made us going forward, you know, a pretty, pretty, very helpful. And That's we've great. also been able to apply for the loan, the small business loan as, uh, so that's one way in, in, in which we've navigated these waters also. That's a great so example of, gotta be it's, creative. It's a very it. challenging time for sure. Um, so if there's, do you have any, any sense of where things are headed? Where, where are we going with this or you as, Kind of like, oh my God, you know, like everybody else. Whoa. I, I, yeah, I, um, I, do, we don't have, definitely don't have any magic insights. Unfortunately, um, you know, we're we're operating with the same information others have, with the advantage that we we get to we get to interact with a lot of different co-ops around the country, so we get lots of pieces of information, I suppose, but we don't have any great insights right. into the future. Um, so I think you know, right now. Um, I think what we're seeing is that our, our co-ops that we're working with, co-ops that we are seeing around us are, um, you know, many are just on hold. Some are starting to, uh, or are starting to reopen or planning for reopening. 
Um, actually, we work with a fair number of food co-ops, and those folks have been working really hard through this wow. process. Yeah. Um, who, you know, they're, they've been um, uh, really stepping up to take to try and make sure that food is available in their communities and that they, they can offer an array of services, whether that's delivery or curbside pickup. Uh, we work with other essential businesses like home care co-ops that are uh, continuing to have to find ways to operate during this time. So it's, it's, it's around, yeah, I think in some ways the pandemic has created so much uncertainty, but I feel like right now the big question that we're asking is what's the economic uh, what's going to be that what kind of economic recession um, are we going to see and how long is that going to last and we have no no you know unique insights other than we 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 know that it will be that there will be a significant impact even once the economy starts to reopen and we know that's maybe the it feels like almost that's the place where the greatest uncertainty sits for folks because if if things could reopen in a couple of months and folks could restart their businesses um, many of them could could get by because co-ops are awfully resourceful and creative and resilient. But if the if folks don't have money, if if the community doesn't have money to buy the products or, or services they're selling, or they, um, you know, you know, who know, then that's going to create an even more um, distress for them. And yeah, that's right about that. The whole the whole uh, factor of demand seems to be the one thing that a lot of the people that are pushing for reopening aren't taking into consideration because yeah. if people aren't going to go out and buy then there's there isn't going to be the demand to, to really support reopening yeah if you aren't work i mean if you're not working right now you've got limited uh you've got limited or no income mm -hmm. coming in maybe you've tapped unemployment but maybe you haven't i know lots of folks who've tried and maybe haven't been able to get through those systems so I said it's a that's a huge factor um, is what what there'll be there'll be both the fear um, we of uh, what will be you know there'll be the fear of of having you know, whether if for some of our co-ops that are uh, working very closely with people how will people want those services uh, will they how quickly will they want folks back in the home but also will they even have money to buy them. So I want to ask one final question. Of course, this, this is the one that uh, probably the most challenging. Um, worker cooperatives are part of the whole small business world. And um, I run across a lot of speculation that small businesses are going to be maybe out of business the whole way in which the economy is going to restructure, et cetera, et cetera. You just aren't going to have that much space for small businesses except online or what have you. Not expecting any wisdom or <laughs> great insight, but just what you might have to say about that to whatever extent you can. Well, I suppose I couldn't do this work if I wasn't a bit of an optimist. Um, I, I, so, so I have to say that I, what I, I think, I mean, we, so we've been working with startup worker co-ops, expanding worker co-ops, and now quite a lot of businesses that are converting to worker ownership. And I see, uh, one, I see an enormous amount of resilience. I mean, I, you know, you don't want um, resilience on the back of people trying to support their families. Um, but um, there is a lot of ability among worker co-ops to find ways to, to, to get through tough times. We've seen that. And um, we hope, we, we think that's still true. Uh, we still certainly are seeing it. We're seeing worker co-ops that are finding ways to adapt their business model, e knowing that even if things reopen right now, that they see an opportunity to, to create um, more virtual or online um, opportunities to sell their products or services, and we see we see that. So um, we've had folks coming to us for loans to uh, to add on new parts of their business, um, even in the midst of this. Not mm -hmm. not because um, they aren't experiencing crisis, but they see uh, they found ways to kind of grow from this in new ways. So I guess I I do feel as as nervous as I am about the economic. For what's coming down the path and as as concerned i am for the health and safety of, of our members and and you know I, I do see an opportunity 
for worker clubs to really, I think they are part of the, they are a key part of the solution going forward because they're looking out for their workers in ways that other businesses right. just often are able to do. And I think they are able to be, to kind of find, find ways to adapt um, more creatively than to because they get the buy-in of the key people, the employees. So I, I think um, there's opportunity for startups and a lot of opportunity for converting businesses that may, where the owner may just say, I can't do this alone. I can't navigate this alone. Um, but their employees may say, you know what, together we can, we can do this. There's a, there's a business here that still is needed that we still want to work in. So if we work together, we can, we can, uh, can transfer. So I, I'm optimistic. Um, that um, through all of this, this could be, in fact, a key opportunity to grow more worker co-ops um, and, and really have more of the mainstream economy recognize the value of cooperatives broadly and worker co cooperatives in particular. I think one of the things that I have learned over the years um, that supports your, your outlook is that uh, <clears throat> if you're optimistic, not unrealistic, but optimistic, um, you're going to see the opportunities more likely than if you're pessimistic. The grays and the darkness cover up what's what's out there. And uh, okay, uh, Christina, thank you very much. This has been very, uh, very informative for me, at least, and I certainly hope that it's been informative for uh, all the people who are going to view our. Uh, 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 video cast and um best of luck and um maybe we'll run into each other at some conference along the way over the next few years thanks michael really nice to talk to you thanks so much for inviting me on okay bye bye now bye thanks so this has uh, been an interview with christina jennings of shared capital cooperative and uh, this was done by the grassroots economic organizing newsletter I'm Michael Johnson, and thank you for tapping into it. Have a good day.